Welcome to our review on the circulatory system. So we've already looked at blood, now what we need to do is understand how we're actually going to move this blood around our body. So what we find then is the blood's going to leave the heart under a very high pressure through blood vessels called arteries. The blood will always return to the heart through blood vessels called veins and any exchanges that are going to occur between the blood and surrounding tissues happens only in the capillaries. So our first blood vessel we're going to look at in a little bit more detail is the artery. Now with the arteries, because the blood is passing through them under very high pressure, then they've got to have this thick muscular and elastic wall. If they didn't have that thick wall, they burst just under the pressure of the blood moving from the heart. So they've got that thick muscle and elastic wall to withstand the high pressure from the blood leaving the heart. Second blood vessel we need to look at are the veins. Now you can see in the diagram there, they look very different to our arteries. They've got a much thinner wall and a much larger space in the middle called the lumen. Now the reason behind that is because in our veins, the blood is flowing at a much lower pressure, so they don't need that thick wall. However, because the blood is flowing at this low pressure, they do need another structure there called a valve. Now they do ask you about what the purpose or the function of the valves is, and your answer to that is to stop the backflow of blood. The third and final type of blood vessel we need to know about are the capillaries. Now, any of the exchanges that are taking place with the cells occur through these capillaries. And one of their adaptations to make this happen faster is that they're only one cell thick. So because they've got this very thin wall around them, only one cell thick there, then diffusion happens very quickly. As our blood moves into the capillaries then, what we find is that some of the blood plasma is forced out through these tiny holes in the capillary walls and it bathes the cells that it surrounds. Now, they're going to have the exchange taking place at this point, they'll be picking up carbon dioxide, releasing oxygen and so forth, and then that blood plasma passes back into the capillary and the whole reason it can do this is because the capillary walls are permeable. Carrying on looking at our capillaries then, we need to remember that we've got very important substances crossing from our blood plasma to the cells for respiration here. And the two we've got to remember first of all are glucose and oxygen for that purpose. In addition to that though, we'll also have amino acids passing into the cells so that the cells can use those amino acids to make new proteins. And from the respiring cells into the plasma, we will have our carbon dioxide and any lactic acid passing. What we've got here then is the diagram of the heart that you do need to know. So the best thing you can actually do here is to print out a copy of this and then stick little post-it notes or little flaps over each of the actual phrases related to the parts of the heart. That then means that you can sit there and test yourself by lifting up the flaps when you think you know what it is and seeing if you've got it right. Unfortunately, there is no simple way to learn this. It's just a case of sitting down and going over it again and again. So when we're thinking about the circulatory system then, when we're thinking about humans, then we have what's called a double circulatory system. And the reason we've got a double circulatory system is because blood is gonna pass through our heart twice on one journey around the body. So you can see in the diagram there how that happens. If you think about it, the blood comes back from the body into the right side of the heart so it goes through the right atrium to the right ventricle and then off to the lungs where it picks up its oxygen and then it returns back to the left side of the heart through the atrium through the ventricle and then out around the body before continuing on loop now this double circulatory system is an advantage to us because it means that the right side of our heart can actually pump blood at a lower pressure to our lungs than the left side which is pumping it around the body and that's important because if we pumped blood at high pressure to our lungs, we'd end up damaging them. Okay, but we do need a high pressure to pump blood around the body because it's got a long way to go. So we avoid the damage in the lungs by having the right side pump at a low pressure and the left side pumps at a much higher pressure to get it all the way around the body. The last thing I've got here for you then is just the pathway that blood will take through the circulatory system. So this is just another way that you can try to learn it. So what we actually find is this could come up as a six mark question, 
So you do need to know the parts of the heart it passes through and in the correct sequence. So if we think about blood returning from the rest of the body first of all, it enters the heart through the vena cava. So that's a big vein that passes back into the heart itself. From there it flows into the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. Once it's in the right ventricle, then the heart's going to contract again and that's going to push the blood out through the semilunar valve and into our pulmonary artery. The blood flows along the pulmonary artery to our lungs where it's going to pick up oxygen and release carbon dioxide and then it goes back to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Feeds into the left atrium, through the bicuspid valve and into the left ventricle before the heart contracts pushing the blood out through the semilunar valve into the aorta which then takes the blood around the rest of the body. So do go careful to learn each of those in sequence. Make sure you remember the names of the valves, tricuspid on the right, bicuspid on the left, and semilunar valves are the ones that go between the vessels that basically leave the heart. So pulmonary is anything to do with the lungs, and veins always go back to the heart, heart arteries always go away from the heart.